Jack Cafferty's here with the Cafferty File. Jack. So you remember that swine flu deal a, a while back? Fears of a global pandemic, millions of deaths, shortages of vaccines, on and on and on. What we wound up with, fortunately, didn't even approach that. There were far fewer deaths than expected. More than 70 million unused doses of the newly created H1N1 vaccine just here in the United States. And now there's this. There are two reports in Europe that say the World Health Organization vastly exaggerated the swine flu threat, as did the news media, I might add. They say decisions were poorly explained and not transparent enough, and that's why public trust in the WHO is plummeting, their word. These reports suggest the UN's health agencies did not disclose possible ties to the pharmaceutical industry when recommending how countries should respond. They say the WHO caused widespread unnecessary fear and caused countries to waste millions of dollars. All the while, and here's the kicker, the agency was getting advice from experts who were on the payroll role of the pharmaceutical companies that manufactured the swine flu vaccine. Surprise! The WHO says claims that this was a fake pandemic are irresponsible, and they insist the organization was never improperly influenced by the pharmaceutical industry. Sure. Other experts are defending the health organization as well, saying they made the best decisions they could under the circumstances. Nevertheless, in light of the charges, the WHO has launched two separate investigations. Here's our question. What if influence from the pharmaceutical companies led the World Health Organization to exaggerate the swine flu threat? Go to CNN.com slash Cafferty file, post a comment on my blog. If it happened, I suppose, Wolf, it could be characterized as creating a market for that vaccine, couldn't it? Some people probably would characterize it like that, Jack. Unfortunately, did not turn out to be as bad as we feared. Thank no. you, Jack. For that, uh, let's go to Jack once again for the Cafferty file. Jack. I wonder if there's an executive in that company with a short shelf life as a result <laughs> think, of that little screw-up today. I think they should have rehearsed that one. Yeah, it looks like it. Question this hour, what if influence from pharmaceutical companies led the World Health Organization to exaggerate the swine flu threat? Alexa in Virginia writes, I got the swine flu last fall. It knocked me flat. I was incapacitated for about a month and still feeling it a month after that. I have never felt physically worse in my life. I find it completely believable that in someone with a weaker immune system, it could have led to hospitalization and serious consequences. If the hype over swine flu led to more immunizations in the people who needed it most, then I don't care where the motivation came from. It helped to save people's lives. Stephanie writes, what about the media, Jack? The media had nonstop coverage on the possible spread, the dangers, criticism that it was taking too long to supply the vaccines across the country. Talk about exaggeration and pumping up the public's anxiety. Mark in Chicago writes, a good question, Jack, especially surprising from you. The reports don't argue the data was wrong, only that some relationships were not disclosed. Appearance is everything in ethics, and the WHO would have no should have known better. A simple caveat by them revealing the ties would have sufficed, especially since the pedigree of the scientists and epidemiologists consulting for the WHO are top-notch. Marja in Sweden, that's exactly what happened. It was the same way with the bird flu. And the reporters, both on TV and in the newspapers, incited people to hysteria. I could guess it, so I never took any vaccinations, even though I would have gotten them for free here in Sweden. Marie writes, is anyone surprised? Big oil, big pharma, etc. own our nation. Brandon in Alaska writes, if the worst case scenario had played out and there hadn't been enough vaccines produced, these guys would have been stoned to death. Better to use too much caution than not enough. And Joe writes from Delray Beach, Florida, you know, there's something not kosher about the swine flu anyway. If you want to read more on this, you'll find it on my blog at cnn.com slash Cafferty File. Did you get that joke there? That's I did. Kosher. About kosher about swine. The swine. Yeah, I got it. Got it, Jack. Cool. I'll see you tomorrow. Humor. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Bye.